Okay, well I guess I'll go ahead and start with the plant of the month. I'm just kind of filling in. Uh, Jean, or excuse me, uh, Jane Holm put this together. He always does such a wonderful job. Um, and at the end of this one, you'll see a lot of uh, uh, pictures of, photo, of plants in his yard that he's taken. So, and so this tonight we're focusing on three different kinds of lyantris. Um, lyantris is kind of a flagship plant of the prairie. It really stand, they really stand out because a they're tall, they're tallish. B they're purple, which is great, and the density of the flowers makes that purple really stand out. And uh, you know, it's wonderful when you see two or three, and when you see a whole field of them. It truly takes your breath away. Um, so the the uh, the first one is Liatris pycnostachia, and, and I'm just going to talk as this goes behind because it's there's so much information on these slides. Um, pycnostachia, um, they have pycnostachia in particular has many common names, and this is one of the plants that I would kind of recommend. It's almost easier to just learn the scientific name because pycnostachia it can be. Um, Prairie, Gay Feather, Prairie, Blazing Star, Kansas, Gay Feather, Kansas, Blazing Star, a couple more things, um, maybe in the north, but also on the Wildflower Center, they had that it could be Cattail, Blazing Star, Cattail, Gay Feather, Cattail, Liatris, and Harry Button, Snake Root. <laughs> so, and, and since there are three of them, they, you know, that's a lot of names to learn. So if you just learn Liatris, pick no state yeah it's a lot easier um, this, and this one is the most widest spread the pycnostachia gut can go it grows from wisconsin to the gulf coast so it adapts to a lot of different kinds of prairies the blackland prairies the gulf coast prairies um, and basically they are prairie plants they need full sun um, and particularly pycnostachia, if it doesn't quite get enough sun, it, it gets kind of curly and kind of floppy, which isn't horrible. It's just not quite, you know, the way it looks normally. Um, so if that happens to you, it's not that it's infected with anything. It just is not quite happy, and so they get kind of screwy. Um, normally, I think in our area, it's found in clay-like soil, uh, pycnostachia, but it also grows in sandy soil. And this one will take the most moisture. Um, if you have kind of a wet area, you're apt to do well with pycnostachia. Um, let's see. And all the liatris, they're used by butterflies, they're used by bees, they're used by moth, I mean, uh, wasps that take nectar. Um, you know, so they're really, and then you'll find spiders around them, of course, because they're other insects. So it's really a plant that attracts a lot of insects. Um, here we go with all the names um, on this one. Uh, and also moths. It, it, they, they do serve as a host plant for at least two moths and probably more. Um, so the next one is uh, Lyanthus acidota, which is a little slimmer, and in my experience, again, they're, they're more apt to be found in um, a sandy soil, but they also grow in clay soils and a variety of soils. Uh, they don't get quite as tall. Pycnostachia can get up to five feet. These get up to maybe three feet. Um, oh, and they bloom, and all these bloom on the late end of summer, middle to late end of summer, into the fall, usually. Uh, Pycnostachia can go well, can go into the end of winter, although I was just kind of checking around, and there's probably not much of it blooming now. It's kind of sept uh, August, September, October. Um, but they can't go later. And the same with acidota starts maybe in July and goes through September. Um, uh, one of the things that, that uh, uh, James shows is a, is a slide on how to grow it. And I would recommend that if you're interested in growing it, that you go to the website and look up for the plant of the month because all of these slides are on here. And it's kind of complicated. It talks about stratification and striation. And the good news is, is that in our area, it's generally not that complicated. You can have pretty good luck if you just put the seeds in a pot you know, just cover them lightly with soil or with nothing, and you spritz them a couple times a day, and they should start sprouting. It is a slow grower because it has a, a you know, kind of a little tuber corn thing, and so it, that the plants that have that, it takes, you know, a couple years usually for them to mature. Um, and uh, then the last, the last liatris for tonight is to talk about is liatris bracteata. Um, 
here. Uh, this one is it has clusters of flowers, which so it's got you know something like that, and then something kind of like that farther down the stem instead of that set, steady stream of flowers. So it's pretty distinctive. Um, it blooms a little later in the year, usually. Um, you know, it depends on what they do with mowing because if they mow something in a, you know, early in the summer or even in the middle of the summer, then that affects the blooming period. So they'll, but they, so they may bloom just later than their normal time. Um, and again, same thing. Lots of insects here. Uh, Brachiata is a is a Texas endemic, and. Um, we probably in the Houston and surrounding count Harrison and the surrounding counties. We probably have half of the populations in the entire world, which is not all that many. You can find it at Willow Waterhole, which is you know open to the public, and and then some kind of in the areas sort of near the uh, Willow Waterhole, they can be found. Um, you know, and it just lets you, kind of reminds you that this was you know, one big prairie, and in these certain areas where like you find the Brachiata, those are the prairies, you know, things have, that were related, the soils are related. You know, maybe you get out to another section of Harris County and you don't find it because the soil is different. But anyway, it's a wonderful plant and it's not hard to grow. Oh, and somebody said, reminded me that if you rescue one or buy one, that you want to keep the corn, that's what it is, corn, um, up near the top of the, you want to plant the corn right at ground level. Yeah. So, good luck. Have fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you.